This is week four of the spring trimester. I'm Jennifer Marie and this is my Atelier Diary. This summer there's a workshop happening at my Atelier, the Ravenswood Atelier in Chicago. My instructor Magda's teaching and I'll be assisting it. It's a workshop that's split into two parts. You can either take the whole thing or one or the other. So there's a two-week drawing course and then a four-week painting course. It goes through parts of July and August. I have all the information down in the description box below. And then I also have my email address. If you have any questions or you want to register, you can contact me through there. And also, um, if you register through me, you get 15% off your tuition. Okay, for my figure painting, I have two weeks left to work on it. And so Monday, I looked at what the farthest behind things are. And so the further things that were behind were the hands and the foot. And Matt was really pushing me to get a more linear aspect to these areas, really work out to get really specific drawing in the hands and the foot. I've been doing some things like that, getting more uh, linear with the paint strokes that I put down with my cast painting. So he's trying to push me to do it more with the my figure painting. So I was working on the hands and getting their basic shapes blocked in, um, working to pull out the fingers, but not starting with pulling out the fingers. So I would make sure I knew where the wrists were and then the hands in relationship to the wrists. Um, the, the hand that's to the left, that's up, that's holding the pole that's going above his head, I would, I think I, okay, so I would have the wrist. I started off with the thumb because that's most separated. Um, a separated form and then I worked on the the plane of all of the fingers and then I switched to the other hand and again worked with the wrist and then the thumb again is separated from all the other forms and then I worked out the knuckle first I separated the the first finger and then the other three fingers as a big plane and then going with the foot I was working with the foot and starting with the ankles and then go, trying to go down the big planes of the foot. And Matt actually then, to show me what he was talking about with making it more linear, he took my brushes and my palette and was painting on the foot and showing me how he can work with it to still keep it impressionistic, but then also have this linear aspect to it that shows tighter structure. So something that he was doing too, which I kind of forget about, is he, while he was painting the foot, he was also at the same time working on the, the plane around the foot, so the background or the, the floor that the foot is resting on. And I know that when you paint something, you should be working on the background as well, so it has a nice paint surface, and so you can work the background into the area that you're working on and the area that you're working on into the background. So there's cohesion there. But I guess what I would do is more mix a little bit of the background color and work on the background or do, like paint the background around it quickly and then just have wet paint there so when I'm working on the foot or whatever that's right by the background I could fuss with edges to make sure the edges were uh, soft or hard enough. Um, but what he was doing was also not just like having a flat background color, but also working with value shifts as well, which I don't usually, I guess, think about so much when I'm um, just like going around the background around an area. So for example, the top plane of the foot, he was showing me that it looks like light spilling out from the top plane of the foot onto the background. So he was dragging some background color into the foot to show how the background's like a bluish color, and so like blue or colder colors would show uh, planes that are kind of turning away. So as the foot is turning away and not looking flat, but turning into the background, it has some background color in, in the foot. And then also he's lightening up the background area too, where it looks like light is spilling from the foot onto the background, the floor. Then come Tuesday, I focused on the head and the neck because I felt like, especially the portrait was kind of the, lead, the farthest thing behind now. I had so much fun working on this area, and I feel like I'm getting a lot better at doing this. Um, thinking about uh, the big planes of the face and the head and the neck and how they all work together, thinking about the, the structure, so especially Brian has a whole lot of hair, and making sure that it doesn't look like a mushy cotton ball, but that you can 
have an idea of the structure of the head that's under the hair as well. And thinking about the big planes and how light is moving across and colors moving across the big planes, uh, that really helped a lot and I, I feel like I got, I'm pretty happy with what I got done this day and I feel like I got a whole lot done with it um, and I feel like I might be almost done with working on the portrait, the head and the neck. Um, I think before what I would do is I would focus on the features, painting a nose or the eyes or the eyebrows or something like that and so things would kind of look cut out or disjointed but trying to abstract things and just see how lights moving across to form that I guess just puts me in a better mindset to be able to paint the forms more naturalistically. Wednesday I then spent a lot of time or all the time on the legs and working with trying to unify the shadow shapes in the legs especially that the standing leg there's there's a lot going on with the structure and I feel like I didn't have it nailed yet so I was working with the just the drawing of the legs but um, working with the shadow shape too to try and make that more specific. Thursday I did the same thing working on both of the legs. This time not just working in the shadow shape but also working in with the light shape as well and trying to make sure that the light shapes were unified. Um, Matt pointed out that it looked like light wasn't really convincingly moving down the leg so I needed to unify the light shape and show that really try and connect the light shapes as they do in nature so it doesn't look spotty and disjointed but it's more of like a, a flowing light going down the leg how it actually does look in nature. Also one thing that I like to do is I like to flip my painting upside down and look at it that way. So I did that Thursday morning and flipping my painting upside down I could see that the structure of the leg still wasn't making sense. It kind of looked like the, the lower leg wasn't connected properly to the top part of the leg and for some reason I couldn't I couldn't see that when I had my painting normally but then when I flipped it upside down it, it just makes it look well more unfamiliar to me so I can be more critical of myself and my brain isn't tricking me that it's it's right so doing that and seeing that the the leg looked wrong um, I flipped my painting back and then it was time for Brian to model so I was looking at his leg and I could definitely see why I painted it that way and so but it was so confusing and I didn't know quite how to fix it so what I ended up doing was I walked behind everyone's easels around the model room I think twice just looking at how the forms are changing as I'm getting like a 3d or 3d like a like a 180 view around Brian's leg and so that made a lot more sense so I could understand the connection of everything and so um I feel like I fixed the structure and the legs making a lot more sense now. Friday I ended up getting a migraine and I wasn't able to go into the studio for the whole day which is really too bad so I couldn't work on anything with the figure painting or the cast painting. And as for my cast painting I forgot to take pictures during this week and I usually will uh, take a video of the cast painting close up and move my camera around so you can see detail shots but I wasn't there on Friday because of my headache. So, um, So what I ended up doing was for this week. Um, the previous week I have the main focal baby pretty much resolved as much as I can and I think it's I think it's good and I'm happy with it so now I'm moving out from that and judging my resolve and how I'm going to resolve everything else based off of the main focal baby. So I spent this week working more towards the right so working on the far right baby and I spent a lot of time more time than I feel like I should have been able to, but oh well. Um, the the baby that's all the way on the right on the arm that's holding the scroll. I don't know why it took me such a long time to get the shapes of the hand and the scroll and the arm. It took me a really long time to get them and I still feel like I want to make adjustments but I feel like I just got to move on from that so I don't get like super stuck there. I think if I just uh, keep working on getting the rest of the baby in I can always go back and fix it later. I don't know why it's like so it's been so tricky for me to get that area but I'm still doing fun things with paint with the palette knife there's a, this like gold paint that's brushed onto the actual cast so I'm trying to show the effect of that and so um, in areas I'm finding that I'm getting a better result with making my painting look more 
like how the cast does, not just with using my brush, but with my palette knife. So I'm finding different ways that I can move paint around with the palette knife as well to get the, the effect of what I'm seeing. So taking my palette knife and putting mixtures of paints and scraping it across or uh, like pulling the, the, the palette knife down in certain ways. Or even I would take paint with my palette knife and I would put it on the canvas that way, like just a tiny bit of it. Um, so you can still see the, the dry layer underneath. But then I would wipe off my palette knife with a paper towel completely and then I would try and scrape the paint off that I just put on almost as much as possible and that was kind of giving this other interesting effect to it that kind of looked like, um, uh, I don't know, like the just how the plaster looks where you, it's got these weird bumps to it. So. I'm just finding different ways that I can play with the paint and applying the paint to get it to look closer to the actual cast. And then extras for this week. On Monday we had our portrait class and we did Brian again. So instead of working on the same drawing, I went from a different angle, still using charcoal on Canson paper. I really like how this one turned out. Um, I was using the charcoal a lot darker than I normally do. I built it up really fast. This is using comparative measuring. I'm feeling a lot more confident with comparative measuring, so I think what I'm gonna do next Monday is I'm gonna do the, the portrait with paint. So we'll see how that goes. Tuesday, we had a model named Jack come in, and this is my drawing. I like how this one turned out as well. He, what he did was he started off with his shoulders facing a little bit more directly in my direction, and as the pose went on, he would um, like, really twist his body. So this one, he was kind of twisting back and forth, which is normal for a person to do. So um, it, it really helped with keeping straight, long lines at the start so I can move the pose as Jack was moving. And then also then once I'm getting a, the pose that's really close to it, then I would just say that okay this is the pose now because he might like start twisting back out again but I wanted to get a, a nice drawing done so I just like locked it into place and I feel like the the shoulders and the hips and the feet make sense so I'm happy with how this one turned out and finally in my last video I talked about how something was getting shipped to me but it didn't get here in time well the package finally arrived and the figurative art convention and expo held a contest to win the ultimate figurative prize pack and this is a new expo that's happening for the first time I think it's happening in November in Miami and it sounds like it's gonna be really fun and there will be a lot of the a big artists there. I'll post a link to it if anyone's interested in looking it up. I think also the track conference is going to be held at the same time there, which I haven't been to but I've seen videos on the internet and I bought their book on papers that were published during it and the track one um, seems really interesting and I would like to go to both of them sometime. But so the ultimate figurative prize pack, they sent four DVDs. Ah! They sent four DVDs of artists. So we have Old World Portraiture with Daniel Graves, Secrets of Portrait Painting with Cesar Santos, Secrets of Classical Painting with Juliette Artistides, and finally The Legacy of an American Painter, Max Ginsberg. So these DVDs, they the artists here go through a painting and they show you their how they how they do it and their techniques to do it. Um, these seem pretty cool. They're pretty expensive. Most of them I think are $127. The Cesar Santos one is huge. All the other ones they have two DVDs. This one has four, so there's a lot of um, footage on it. I think this one's 200, and I know that's a lot of money for some people it is for me and I've been interested in um, wanting to see these before which is really cool that I won this prize pack so now I get to watch all of these but I thought that I would do a review on each one so if you are interested in buying it maybe I can you know help you make your decision on which one you want to buy or if you want to do it or not so definitely if you have any questions or anything that you want me to talk about with these DVDs let me know in the comments or message me or email me 
or whatever. Um, I, I did watch this one all the way through and I'm going to probably watch this one again so I can talk about it clearly in a video. So I'll probably do the Daniel Graves one first. So look out for those videos. Those will probably get up sporadically when I have time outside of school to watch these. And then also I got in the price pack, I got three of these clips. They're easel clips and you put your brushes in here. So I started using one. I gave one to my friend and I don't know, in the studio, um, I have it clipped to my easel and I don't find them like um, too ha handy in the studio because I can just like, there's in your fear in a studio, it's easy to put any them your brushes wherever you want. But I, I see how this could be extremely useful plain air painting. I went plain air painting once and um, you're outside and there's a lot of things to hold and you don't have like a desk or anything by you. So these are really, really sturdy clips. So you could probably even clip up for plain air painting your, your painting to your easel or whatever. And so for plain air painting, I recommend these because these seem really high quality. They're called easel brush clip or easelbrushclip.com. You can check these out. And like I said, I've already started the Daniel Gray's one, so I'll probably put that video out first. But if you want me to talk about a specific artist um, after that one, there's Cesar Santos, Max Ginsburg, um, Julia Artistides, and then the Daniel Gray's one. So let me know.